Welcome, people of planet Earth and all planets beyond. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Josh, and I have a treat for you today. We have this very rare Nike tracksuit. I have both the top and the bottom. A dispute for so long. Sportswear powerhouse. So in the early 60s, Nike was not known as Nike. They were known as Blue Ribbon Sports. That's what they sort of started as. And they struck a deal with a company in Japan called Onisaka to import their Tiger sneaker into the Americas and to sell them in North America. And they did that for many years. And eventually the guys at Nike, the newly formed Nike, suggested a few changes to the company for the shoe. And that developed into the Onisaka Tiger Cortez. And that you might be familiar with because Nike did their own version in America as well, which led to a dispute amongst the two companies and they basically decided to part ways. Well, that was until a little bit later before they would actually be intertwined slightly again because Onisaka is formed with a GTO and with a company called Jalink to form a company that we all now know today as ASICS. In 1977, these three companies merged into a sportswear powerhouse in Japan, and they called themselves ASICS. Nike at the time was growing in popularity. There was a lot of cool things going on. They were becoming uh, well-known in the track and field and sports world, and they were developing all kinds of different apparel to go along with their shoes, one of which was uh, track suits like this. The uh, track suit was very popular at the time, uh, lots of tennis players were playing in at Nikes. A lot of, uh, of track and field stars were wearing these in for their warms up, warm ups. But there's something interesting about this particular pair. You can see uh, one thing right off the bat, and this is not particularly unusual, but you see it has the pinwheel design here on the front. And this pinwheel design was used from around 1978 to about 1982 or so. It's one of the most sought after uh, Nike designs uh, as of today. Uh, people seem to love this uh, retro looking Nike design. It also has Nike on the back, spelled out all big letters. And this one is just a super cool. It has the four stripes that you see here um, down the uh, shoulder and onto the arm. And what's interesting about that though is of course, uh, Adidas was around and had their own tracksuits with the three stripes. And that was sort of how they distinguished themselves as a three stripe brand. Uh, you'll also see here uh, has the four stripes on the uh, pants as well. But there's one really distinguishing factor about this particular garment. Nike at the time uh, in the late 70s wasn't necessarily producing all of their own stuff. Some of the stuff they had to import. Though it wasn't going to be long before Nike was making their own tracksuits just like this that had the pinwheel design even, that had the Nike uh, on the back. But this one is really interesting because this one was actually produced in Japan by Jalink. And around here you can see on this tag by ASICS. So this is an official Nike tracksuit produced uh, for Nike by Jalink and ASICS in Japan. There are a couple other variations of this particular jacket, one that has the Nike logo um, and made in Japan, and one that has the Jalink tag on it made by ASICS. So I think it appears to me that the Jalink tag is actually a little bit more rare. Jalink, uh, like we had said, merged into ASICS um, and they were a sportswear brand in Japan. And they produced this particular garment. Uh, from all of the different elements, you can actually see Jalink is down here at the bottom as well, on the bottom near the waist. And on the pants, it has Jalink on the outside and <clears throat> Jalink on the interior tag. This tag being in yellow, which some tags were. For those people who care enough to wear the very best was Jalink's motto. And now, how do we know how old this jacket is exactly? Well, we don't exactly know a date of production. I don't believe that's anywhere here on the tag, but since it was produced by ASICS, it could not be older than 1977. Then we have the pinwheel design on the jacket. So we know that was started to be used in 1978 or so. And I imagine since we can find other garments made in the USA uh, or with the Nike branding made in Japan, that those were probably the, the later 70s uh, and early 80s, like 79, 70, uh, 80, and 81. 
Since this has the Jalink tag still, I imagine that we probably are looking at 1978 uh, as a year of production for this uh, set of garments. Which means that since they were only produced for so long, they are fairly rare. Now it's quite possible, and I've not seen this yet, that there are Jalink track suits and that were produced for Nike prior to their forming with ASICS. Um, but as far as the ones with ASICS on the branding on a Nike tracksuit, it appears that it was probably only a couple of years at most. So I acquired this jacket from my friends Rick and Cynthia in Louisiana. Uh, they've been really awesome to work with. Um, I'm actually selling these for them, so if you're watching near the uh, publishing date of this video, uh, you can probably even bid on this because it will be going up for auction soon on our eBay account, which is linked in the description below. Uh, but I was so happy to, and thrilled to bring this back and to look into it and investigate this really cool and rare piece of Nike history. I'm not a huge Nike guy, uh, so it was really awesome to see some really cool and rare pieces just like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed something, maybe learned a little bit. Uh, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.